Welcome, welcome back YouTube. This is part 17 of Let's Play Donkey Kong Country 3. So in this episode we're going to get to the World 6 boss and I think you can tell from looking at the world map that it's probably going to be some sort of water enemy but the concept behind it kind of is it's just the fact that this is another kind of crafty boss that kind of gets monotonous like previous worlds and that type of stuff. Like some of these past couple worlds have had some kind of bosses that require like a certain kind of crafty trickiness that just makes it kind of uh, consuming, time consuming in a lot of ways, but yeah, I've cut, I mean, I think you can come to the realization by this point that this playthrough is going to be lengthier than Donkey Kong Country 2, which I did in a fairly kind of relatively quick John. I'd probably say that Donkey Kong Country 2 is probably about two and a half hours, something like that, but this one's going to wind up being like three hours, three and a half, something like that. It's a pretty, it's a decent sized Super Nintendo game, I would have to say, but I fell to my death back there because I thought that there was more to the stage, like a bonus or something, but you don't, I mean, this is a cliff stage, so that should indicate to you that you don't want to fall on this particular stage that much. It's either going to be enemies or just something like that that's kind of in the way. But yeah, so Donkey Kong Country 3 is lengthier, and, and it, it does have an extra world. There's actually eight worlds in this game. If I get like five or six more bonus coins, I could probably show off at least two of the stages in World 8, but I'm not going to try to 103% this. I mean, this is the toughest of the three games to 100%, I'll tell you that much. I just never did it. I was able to beat the game 25 years ago, but I just wasn't able to... Uh, like, uh, you know, beat it 103%. Now, I've beaten, I want to say, at least the first two. I know I've at least beaten Donkey Kong Country 2 102%. I mean, it took a lot of work, but, uh, you know, I did it as an adolescent, but I just would have to kind of say, like, this game is just, I mean, this is really where they pulled out all the stops. This is kind of, this game knows how to be cheap, so you really have to have, like, a certain kind of finesse to be able to do it. So hats off if you've done it. If you're watching this and you're just reflecting and, being nostalgic and that type of stuff, I would have to say, yeah, it's a chore. I mean, it's not a chore like the game sucks, but it's just kind of one of those situations as far as trying to say that it, it is like uh, like a, a craft, it's an armament to be able to beat this game, so. But, um, yeah, I mean, really, yeah, I'm trying, I'm kind of running out of things to talk about. I just kind of ran out of steam half sent mid-sentence there, but... I am going to watch the news today. I've been kind of transgressing back into watching the news a little bit. It's just kind of the same stuff for the most part. The wars, the the general displacement, but I just would have to say, um, um, yeah, it's just kind of... I feel like that should be pretty standard conduct, is to talk, just to have more palette to talk about. I mean, I like Let's Plays in some degree of today's times, but I feel like in order to be like a classic Let's Player that's doing this and trying to make money, you have to have like some sort of topic matter other than just saying, hey, you know, jump in the bonus barrel, jump in the bonus barrel to get the bonus area and you have to get all the bonus stages. I mean, I could have been straightforward and just done it and just had this been like a standard tutorial, but I want to add, I mean, at this stage, you should know that I'm trying to add more to like the context of it than just the standard thing, but it's kind of extra stuff that needs to happen here. I think definitely, maybe back in 2007, 2008, it was all right to just say, hey, you know, press the B button to jump and that type of stuff, but we need obviously you're going to get that, so that's kind of the context. If you do like the stories, you know, it's interesting when it's interesting when folks will say, like, oh, I was working at, like, you know, like, um, I was working at, like, Get and Go gas station when this game came out back in 1997. The folks that can have those sorts of stories and remember waking up every day at 1 o'clock in the morning to work the graveyard shift at the you work graveyard shift at the gas station and that type of stuff, you know, it's the sagas of some of that stuff. Obviously, prior to COVID times when stores were open for 24 hours, I mean, gas stations still are, but the concept behind it, you know. So yeah, we need seven more. I don't really get any, I mean, yeah, the boss is after this, so I don't really get any more bonus stages, but... I, I, I'm not even certain if I want to attempt the bonus stages in World 7, because I know that that world's going to really get on my nerves. I'll tell you, I at least did the first stage, so you'll at least see the first stage, possibly, in 
episode 18, or at least going to see the first stage of World 7, and that, I did not enjoy that stage at all. I'll just go ahead and say it like that. That was not a fun stage for me. I mean, it, I, I, I respect the game. I appreciate the candor that went into the level design, but it just pissed me off overall. It's just, you know, looking back on it, it's like, this is really kind of a tongue-in-cheek troll, se tongue troll session for, like, the developers just to make that sort of crap happen. But... Yeah, we'll just promptly ride the conveyor belts, and you can kind of snicker and snigger a little bit, and watch me promptly die a few times to this boss, which is going to kind of happen here. So, get your popcorn ready, get your KFC ready, get your two liter of wild cherry Pepsi ready, and that type stuff. So basically what you have to do with this boss is you're the swordfish the whole time. So it's an animal buddy boss. But you have the first part is you just have to knock the enemies into these barriers. And that's kind of the thing. So you have to I mean you don't get any you don't get any Donkey Kong barrels if you get hit. So you have to do this in one session. They don't give you extra attempts if you get hit. I mean it's world six, so it's just kinda you really do have to uh know what you're doing. I mean, it, they, the game assumes that you're going to, like, die a few dozen times and figure it out eventually. I mean, the learning curve happens, and you'll get used to it, and you'll start sailing through this, as you'll notice as I do within the next, this episode and the next one, but you do have to have a certain degree of timing, not just with, like, hitting the enemies, but with arranging for them to hit the barriers so you can poke this guy. And, and keep in mind that... You know, when you poke, and I know I'm saying I'm instructing you how to do it, but you just have to poke the enemy and he gets quicker later. So this is kind of the thing. So he doesn't give you an open amount of time to poke him, otherwise you're going to have to do it again. So, but yeah, so. Just kind of underneath the impression of I'm a little bit hungry. You know, I'm probably going to have a donut or something like that. Just trying to come up with some videos to do. I probably need to do some stuff with Reggie. Just trying to think of some of that extra stuff. But, yeah, it's just kind of... It's really hot. I mean, that's the thing. Now that it's in, like, the crest of spring and summer, it's just kind of underneath the impression that it's kind of hot out. That's kind of... And, of course, where I live, it gets humid. So that's kind of the stuff about it. It's just being able to say that the humidity just makes things extra steamy. So... But this is kind of a creative boss. I would have to say, like, this is kind of an odd arrangement. This wasn't one that I was expecting. I mean, it makes sense just to kind of have it be a water enemy, but then you do have to kind of get used to the swordfish just because, uh... Uh... You have to kind of get used to the swordfish just because... I mean, it's not really a character that you use that much. You used him a lot more in like the first couple games but it, and even then I mean for the most part I would say in every water stage they tried to have the swordfish be in it just because they wanted to like have some attempt at attacking because you can't really attack when you're swimming in this game so you, I mean if you want to destroy the enemies you need the swordfish but I mean it's just kinda I, I, I don't know how I feel about like them having made some of these boss characters be the animal buddies because it, it just it, you're just not used to it. I mean, it's just kind of like they throw you for a curveball, and you have to get used to these guys too in order to do some of the damage. But I mean, it's not something to complain about. Like I would detract from a score of this game over it, but it just kind of you know, it's just a way. It's kind of a way to trip people up as far as saying, "Hey, uh, do you are you?" skilled enough to do this in all assets and aspects of the game it's kind of like i feel like with the with the chimps you know i definitely feel like i probably could beat most stages i mean it's reached a point where when there's just not any gimmicks which there's not many stages that are no gimmick stages but those type stages where you just have to get to the end where this is like a standard mario platform type session i mean i'm pretty good at those i've you know i'm able to beat most mario games especially the ones for the Nintendo and Super Nintendo and like the Game Boy or something like that, but it this is kind of I mean There's only so much that you can do and I think the developers kind of realized like hey, you know this game would be easy So they did some creative stuff with it, but 
Yeah, I mean, that's just that's just the reason why this is probably, I think, a lot of people's least favorite is because, the, it, I mean, it's not like the gimmick stages are bad, but they kind of are like, you know, they just require, this is more of a thinker's game. That's kind of the concept. You have to really, it, it's a, it has its wits about it, so. But I think almost truthfully, I would have to respect the game more because I remember back when I was like younger, back in like the 90s and the early 2000s, I always tried to figure out what the theme of this game was because it was obvious with Donkey Kong Country 2 that it was just kind of a darker game and it also had like a pirate theme about it, but I just could not discover. I was kind of curious as to why Donkey Kong Country 3 didn't have a theme. I mean, you'd think it would be something different, and, but it wasn't. And that's just kind of the stuff, and I realize now it was just a whole... I mean, the context behind this game just really had, like, a lot more of a... I mean, they just did some stuff, and they didn't really... I mean, that's the answer. If you're looking to think of it had, like, a pirate theme, or, like, a Frankenstein theme, or something like that, it... I mean, the character is, the boss character at the end has like a Frankenstein type theme, but for the most part, it's not really themed, and that's just kind of the concept, but it just relies on like gimmicks and craftiness, and that's kind of the thing about it, it's just the way that the game is, but it's not like, you know, Donkey Kong with a the space theme or something like that. So it's just kind of. But it was interesting that the developers did that back in 1996. So, but yeah, this, uh, yeah, this is kind of where stuff gets difficult, and you have to understand. So yeah, I do get a game over. You have to understand that when you do this, you don't get, you don't. For one thing, you don't get a lot of time, and then you also have to be quick with your timing to avoid the shrapnel that kind of shoots out. So this is kind of one of those situations, as far as like, um, I mean, I, I think yeah, if you have a lot of, if you are, if once you get a game over or two or something like that, or if you have enough lives and you die enough times, you'll figure it out as far as realizing cause it's just the same pattern over and over. It's the same pattern, but the thing about it is, is it's just very much just a trial and error kind of session. I think that's just like the main thing about it, but it's just the problem. The thing about it is, is it's just getting to the point of where you died. I mean, once you start, I mean, because there's four segments or five, you have five different intermissions with him before you beat the boss so it's just like the last three boss battle sections are kind of just the one where you have to dodge the shrapnel and this is kind of i mean you just have to understand that the the patterning this for it this is it it's just about it's not so much about like the toughness of it is just remembering what to do. It's just kind of the concept because it gets kind of jittery. I mean, that's the thing. I was definitely, like, when I did beat this boss, I was getting kind of mad. I was like, fuck this. I almost, want, I mean, there's been certain stages in this game where I've questioned if I was actually going to beat this game, but in a lot of ways, like, I admit that, you know, like, time has passed in terms of me wanting to be able to do these types of games. It was the same thing. Like, I don't know if you knew this. For folks who watched Donkey Kong Country 2, but I almost did not complete that playthrough because of the final boss in like the 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 airship battle. That was really tough. And that was just like the concept. I mean, I tried and tried and tried. I was probably about to give it like another two or three or four times, and I was just gonna say, "Fuck it, this is just not able to be done." And that's kind of what happened with Wario Blast. Is that I mean, that last boss was just a pain in the ass, wholesomely. And this is kind of, I mean, this boss is kind of pushing that boundary, and I just question if World 7 is going to be like that. I'll definitely tell you that World 8, if you beat that game 103%, guarantee that that final boss would be a complete ass goblin, but I just would have to say it's just kind of the question of doing it. But just about memorizing the patterns and just keeping a cool head, you got to be cool as a cucumber for it, and just kind of realize that. It's just a jittery boss that just will rack your nerves. It's very nerve wracking. But. I mean, it's a creative, I mean, you have to give the developers credit for being able to come up with something that they knew was just going to irk people, but, you know, in some cases, the difficulty can be kind of where it still pisses you off to not want to do it, but, alright, folks, so, subscribe for more fun, thanks for watching, and have a wonderful night, I'll see y'all in part 18 where we get out of this world.